Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And the chapter in the book is Think on These Things. And it's again talking about training our thought life to fall into line with what God says rather than on a lot of speculation. All too often, my thought life can be best described as a dog trying to chase two squirrels at once. I obsess over things that happened long ago, and I imagine the worst case scenario about what is yet to come. I worry about the what ifs of life in the same way a dog worries over a bone. When my thoughts are chaotic, it is nearly impossible for me to center on Christ and his finished work. I wish I could focus my thoughts on God as easily as I focus my thoughts on all those things that are not helping me in the least. I consider the following passage, however, to be key to finding God's solution in my problems. And as such, I read it often as a reminder of where God wants my thoughts to rest. Philippians 4 verse 8, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and is seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think on and weigh and take account of those things. Fix your minds on them. God wants my thoughts to find their home in the land of honor, truth, purity, and excellence. He knows an occasional glimpse of his goodness and character just won't be enough to bring lasting change. He invites me to feast on his character daily. And as I do, he reminds me of all that is good in his world. He knows that if my mind is full and overflowing with his truth, there won't be room for anything else. I must be active. I must be assertive. My faith must be engaged if my thoughts are to stay fixed on the things of God. It takes discipline. There is no room for passivity in the battle for my mind. I must be tenacious and I must stay diligent. Second Corinthians 10 verse 5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. It's a warfare, guys. I can't say it anything more than that. We're in a war for our minds. And I believe we are at a place, and I'm saying this on July the 16th, 2019, that we no longer can hold the luxury of dangling our fishing rod in more than one stream. We must take our thoughts captive. And one of the main ways that we do that is by not giving our minds access to things that will not lift us up, build us up, or strengthen us in a way that we're able to help others. That includes television shows that we might be watching those guilty pleasures, so to speak, where we kind of say, well, you know, the show's not that bad. Usually, you know, it's got a good point if it wasn't for all that sex and violence and backstabbing, but the good guys win at the end. So, hey, that's okay, right? We can't get away with that anymore. But it's not just what we watch, it's what we hear. What are you listening to? Are you engaging in a lot of gossip. They will poison your 
heart and they will deafen your ears of the goodness of the Lord. There is very little good gossip out there and there's an exception. I'll put the tag up there. People who gossip by turning their gossip into a prayer request for somebody else, you guys can't get away with that anymore. I'm sorry. There's too much at stake. Remember, there's a spiritual battle going on. We can no longer stay passive. We must engage and we have a choice to make. Are we going to obey the Lord or are we going to bend our ear to the world?